When Rupert Murdoch and his news corporation purchased the Wall Street Journal in 2007, there were concerns that the already conservative business paper would get hijacked Fox News style. While it didn't happen right away, the signs are there that the Wall Street Journal has jumped the shark. According to several news outlets, frustration within the Wall Street Journal's newsroom has finally boiled over. Staffers claim editor Gerard Baker has brought too much of Rupert Murdoch's sensibility to the paper. Some told NPR's David Folkenflik that it started with election coverage. And yet there was a sense that the paper was tempered in how it decided to cover candidate Trump, but then failing to really rigorously scrutinize him, particularly in the way that a business publication should. Of particular concern is the practice of shaving off the edges, a term used to describe headlines and copy that downplay Trump's negatives. On a number of occasions, they felt that stories were soft-pedaled uh, in the journal or that stories were broken in other places that they were just simply not able to match. Editor Baker also sent out a directive telling reporters not to use the term seven majority Muslim countries when referring to Trump's travel ban. And in a meeting this week, several reporters expressed concern with Baker's close ties to Murdoch. Obviously, Rupert Murdoch also talks to Donald Trump a fair amount. It's a source of concern for reporters who are not clear on what the impetus is for certain kinds of subtle decisions late at night. At that same meeting, Baker dismissed criticism of the paper's Trump coverage as, quote, fake news, which leads us to believe it's real. Hmm. So, I used to work at the Wall Street Journal, and this just struck me that uh, Gerard Baker is not really denying this. In fact, he's saying, if you want to work for a publication that wants to be more aggressive towards the Trump administration, go. Have at it. Specifically cited in the, Wall uh, the Washington Post and the New York Times, but that's not the way our paper's going to handle it. Well, I'm going to be fairly mixed on this because I've talked to a number of journalists, reporters, and editors who are still there. I was there uh, until 1995, but I still have friends who are there. And it, to me, that's a, a very strong recommendation for the paper is that so many people have stayed while a number have left. But um, uh, the, the, re the journalists I talked to who were at that meeting didn't take away from it that idea of like it or leave it. Mm -hmm. uh, while he made that point that at some point at, at, you know, at some point in this discussion, you may not want to be here. Uh, I think he he uh, he made a number of the editors feel fairly comfortable that they can continue to do the kind of stories they've been doing. And, and basically, I, I do have to say, especially during the election, there was some terrific coverage of Trump. His mob connections came out there. The way he uh, the way he handled his lawsuits came out there. Um, it really is. You know, and, and some of those sexual harassment suits. Yeah. They were the first ones to report it. The issue was, of course, that people expected more of the old Wall Street yeah. Journal to really stay on him. I also understand there was some shakeup going on in the, in the, in the uh, Washington Bureau. They didn't have the whole full staff. So I, I think we have to look at that other side, too, that there are still people at the Wall Street Journal who believe on the news side that they're going to have the ability to cover Trump Hmm. Tough. I, you know, one of the things, too, I think that Baker was suggesting is that you know, everyone out there seems to be very combative in their, yeah. in their approach to stories now. And, and, I, and I do see that. I mean, that's how, and I think what journalists need to do is resist the temptation to always go there as the first point of your story. Right? Every story does not have to be combative. You don't have to just because that's the way the administration is coming after you. Sometimes you can kill them with a little bit of kindness or with facts in this case. And I think that's what he was suggesting. Now, there, there are a lot of issues, and I do have a lot of problems with some of the things that were said or allegedly said in the meeting. But, but that point, I think, is valid, that in general, reporters, because of the tone that's out there, everyone seems to be going mm -hmm. for, you know, whatever that low point is in order to make a higher point. I agree with Dan. I don't think it's a bad idea to have a calmer alternative to the New York Times and the Washington Post, which have just been very, very tough on Trump uh, in ways that I think are appropriate, but not everybody has to do the same thing. Uh, as long as their coverage is, is, is uh, true and thorough and they don't have their thumbs on the scale, I don't mind that they are toning it down a little bit. Uh, one thing I should point out is that Gerard Baker has taken some heat for saying that we are not going to say that right. President Trump is lying. Right. Well, guess what? Marty Barron, the editor of the Washington Post this week, said the same thing. And nobody has been tougher on Trump than the Washington Post. Uh, I was disheartened to see Baker 
uh, call the criticism fake news. Yeah, mm -hmm. Now, there's been some suggestions that he was joking. Yeah. I would like to see him explain yeah, that exactly. a little further. Yeah, I would expect the Wall Street Journal, this is where I mm -hmm. wonder, um, to be first and ahead of everybody with regard to the conflicts of interest, the business conflicts of interest that all of us may not be able to understand, but we can see a lot of stuff is going on. From the moment he came out there with those stacks of paper that were blank with a woman saying, that woman saying, oh, yes, we've made sure that he has no conflict of interest. This is the meat of the Wall Street Journal, understanding how those financial deals work. I would expect them to be first and ahead. Not always they have been. So is that because mm -hmm. of some shaving? I don't know. And, I'm and just saying, I should say, you know, right, I'd like to know what the no. people at the Wall Street said that this whole thing about tipping the scales, that at late at night, headlines are getting changed, first paragraphs are getting changed. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where I didn't make up that phrase, shaving the edges, so that once you get past the headline and the, and the first graph, yeah. things get a little tougher, but they soften it going in. That was David Leonard who said that yeah, people would, the reporters yes, would make changes, in the, in the New York, in the New York Times. Times, would make changes at yeah. the end. Yeah. I do have to mention, though, specifically to this point, that the journal had a great conflict of interest story today by I Alexandra yeah. Barz Barzon mm -hmm. on Vornado and the close relationship that, uh, uh, that, that Trump has with them. Um, and, uh, and, you know, they do continue to do those kinds of stories. They have a very strong investigative unit who thinks that people on that unit do believe that they have the right and the ability to do this.